All right, let's get her going here as we close out training camp on the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Forget about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Forget about any other team. We alone are closing out our kind of shorter training camp than most hockey shows. You know what? Because we just it's the right just, amount. We just started last week. Yeah, and we had a like a menu of items to get to. We got a few left just in time for hockey to start. We nailed. So it. are are we? So the NHL and the Toronto Maple Leafs have to submit their their final roster to opening season Uh-oh. tonight at five p.m. <laughs> I see where this is going. I know where this is going. <laughs> where is it going? You have no idea where it's going. Don't say I know where it's going when you don't know where it's going. Is okay. he getting caught? <laughs> <laughs> I knew where this was going. I knew where it was going. Where is it going? That you were going to cut me. No. That I was going to go on LTIR. No. Okay. No, 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 no. They're going to bring up a younger, fresher disco no, Dan. No, no, no. Okay. That's not to say that you're not on the bubble. Oh, okay. Fair, fair, fair. Constantly. Okay. Yeah, fair. Bit but my point McMahon. is, is that uh, when does our training camp end? Like, I'm, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm still a little rusty. Yeah. You know, <laughs> camp, I think, for these guys has ended. Even though the regular season has started, like they've made the team, they've broken camp. It's it's time now. So I think today, I think today camp's over. You can be rusty for a few games. There's 82 of them. How are you? Like you're, oh, you're, you're yeah, your reads. I'm sucked last week. I I'm great to be honest. I had an awesome weekend. Saw uh, Lionel Messi in the flesh on Saturday That's afternoon. Pretty cool. Yeah, quick came and played uh, against TFC for Miami. Uh, four separate people ran on the pitch to try to get a picture with him. I did see that. It was, was uh, it was quite a scene at the old uh, BMO Field. Yeah, yeah, had a good weekend. Great concert Friday, refreshed, ready to rock. How do you feel like your real Kipper and Born game well, is, is your, right now? Are you now? game ready? Are you game ready for the season? No, no, but like, I listen. Most people would say that I'm never really game ready. Like, <laughs> I, I still see clips of myself on TV, and I'm like, wow, they did that. <laughs> They, that's a choice they decided to make. So I'm ready to rock. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. But, yeah. you know, I'm fine. That's the answer. It's I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Yeah, you know. But we're getting fired right into the narrative blender. Like, immediately out of the start, right? Because the first game's against Jack Guy and all that drama with the Habs. Mm. Second game of the season against Sheldon Keefe and Ooh. the Devils, who swept away the, the woeful Sabres in, uh, in Czechia. And then home opener against Kyle Dubas's Penguins and Sidney Crosby. Like, it's a narrative week, it's a boys. big three and four. Mm-hmm. So, it's exciting. Very exciting. Okay. It'll be a great start. All right, I'm Nick Kiprios. He's Justin Bourne. He is our producer, Sammy McKee, Derek Brandeo, Jake the Snake upstairs, pushing all the right buttons for us. This is the Leaf edition of the Real Kipper and Bourne show. In the National Hour, we're going to welcome in Andrew Raycraft. Raycroft, retired NHL goalie, retired uh, Toronto Maple Leaf as well, Nissen studio analyst. So we'll get all the goods out of him over the signing, maybe surprising signing of yeah. Jeremy Swayman to a $66 million contract with the Boston Bruins. It's just surprising because it's like, you're that close. Did it have to? We have to know. Did it have to go public? Okay, save it. Okay. Save, save it. it. Save it. Disgusted that it happened. Save it. Anyways. It's a national hour conversation okay. here. Yeah. Let's focus in on the Leafs locking in their roster. More specifically, Max Pacioretty signs a one-year deal with the Leafs worth $873,770 and oh. no cents. You want to try that again? You try that again? <laughs> also, Steve... Now we're back over, is it Lorenz or is it Lawrence? <laughs> what is going know. on I, with I this text- guy's last name? We haven't even started the season, and you're bouncing around on me, Sammy. I checked in with some people that would know, and it's Lorenz. We're going with Lorenz. So here's my issue. We're going is with Lorenz. It was Lorenz, and Sportsnet called him Lorenz in playoffs last year and all that. Okay. Then he changed it to, like, Lorenz, like Jennifer Lawrence sort of thing. And now we're back to Lorenz. So we'll just do Lorenz. I feel like we'll he's... Do, we'll do phonetic until told otherwise. After hearing everything from him in the preseason, I feel like he'd, somebody just gets his number and texts him, he'd be more than happy to tell you. So true. World's nicest guy. Yeah, he seems like a great guy. Yeah. Okay, I, w- I wish we had more training camp games to kind of get accustomed to throwing Kipper's Clippers to Craig Berube and not Sheldon Keefe. But this this one's going to take time here, guys. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know whether, you know, I need another 
week, two weeks, a month, but there's a rhythm to our Kippers Clippers. We got to pick up on it. But in the meantime, let's let's oh, can't wait let's, for this one. let's grind it out with Craig Berube on Lorenz <laughs> and Pacioretty signing. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm happy about that. I thought uh, both of them had good camps, and they're um, again they got size, skating. Uh, they're different players. I get that, but uh, both very important. So, I'm pretty happy about that. Is there a chance that he will <laughs> never be excited about anything this season unless you win games? Yeah, the last game of the the season. I think that's probably the case. I don't think he's ever going to get on the mic and be like. Whoo! Were we good last night? You guys like that, boys, eh? <laughs> they never get it. Boy, how are we <laughs> good? Yeah, it was pretty good, eh? Yeah, yeah I'm, you know, I'm happy about that, I thought. <laughs> Sound happy there. <laughs> okay, so no real surprise. No, no real surprise. Except the surprise is Steve Lorenz uh, had himself, like, one hell of a training camp. Yeah, really good training camp. I think they had some intention of having him be here and I think he answered the bell and did his job even contributed a little bit offensively which I don't think is the reason he's here so that's nice he feels like a good depth guy down the lineup I would say I'm more surprised at the structure of Pacioretty's deal 873 gets uh the Leafs to within one dollar of the salary cap that's Price is Right stuff right there nice work by Brandon Pridham um but he is buy that for a dollar (laughs) and you did but he is Entitled to two salary cap bonuses, about three hundred and ten grand each. One for playing ten games, one for, for playing thirty-five games. Those two are performance bonuses that would uh, be on next year's salary cap. Kick it down the road, right? So six hundred grand on next year's cap if he plays thirty-five games for the Leafs. I love it. Don't love it, but I do like how cheap it is for this year. So, and safe to say that if they don't like what they see in the first nine games, they punt well that's an interesting point too you have two pressure points to say it ain't working one is early and one of them's 35 games good amount of games if game 33 you're like eh, maybe we're not going to see this through you can make that call so they do have some time to see how it plays out since our first show you were rather skeptical of max patch here mm-hmm. excluding watching him wear number 67 mm-hmm where are you today on his training camp? I thought he kind of faded a little bit towards yeah. the end here. And maybe that had a lot to do with being in a lineup that didn't include Matthews and Marner and Nylander, yeah. Tavares. Well, I think he said something interesting. So I do, I like that he's 873. I like that he's cheap. You know, I think he's a veteran guy who's not going to hurt them. My issue is taking away a spot from a guy. Robertson ends up sticking around. Why don't we listen to the Pacioretty clip that you got for us on his role okay. yep. with the team? Pacioretty clip one, please. At this stage of my career, the, the most important thing is, is winning. And uh, uh, I feel that this group has a chance to win. There's a lot of strong players. And, uh, you know, you don't just want to be along for the ride. You want to contribute. And you want to help. And I feel like there are areas, um, you know, some areas that I've, you know, played in my past that can help the team win and, and some new roles and whatnot that can help the team win. And uh, it's a new challenge for me, and exci- I'm excited for that. Saying all the right things. So roles that he's played in the past, that means being an offensive producer, and roles that, what did he say, some new roles new. that he's not as... Which would have him in the bottom right. six. Right. And that does so show some self-awareness and maybe a willingness to try something different. You know, uh, I, I guess... It's going to be interesting to see how he's used and how he fits in. As of today, game one for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Bobby McMahon looks like he's a healthy scratch. Pacioretty's going to be in the lineup. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, it's not never been about Pacioretty for me. It's been about, I just like Bobby McMahon. Scored 15 times last year. He's younger. He's on the come up. He's big and strong. Yep. Four checks. So, for me, it's denying but, other guys' opportunities. But this is not also, I, I know, but this is also um, having to make hard decisions quick so when you when you make the commitment to invite him to training camp and i'm sure between patch and his agent uh i think it's alan walsh i think it's his agent that there has to be some sort of kind of understanding that he'd get an honest look early to come in and and find a, a role or a, a place early yeah 
Bobby McMahon, you could be a lot more patient with. And as a young guy, he can handle it probably a lot better than a guy coming in like that and starting the season with, I'm already didn't get a fair shake. And, you know, they do say, and maybe you've seen this, but like veterans take longer to find their footing to get up to game speed. You know, so for Pacioretty, I think it's reasonable to say, let's give him a fair shake. Let's see how his skating is after the Achilles injuries, after a year last year. Can he get up to speed and be a useful guy? I think to the point, the conversation we had before, maybe you know after 20 games it's just not there and you can make that decision. But, yeah, for a guy like McMahon, he's probably fought for every bit so far. Not the worst thing to have for him to have a reality check that you're a fringe guy. Just a reminder, you're a fringe guy. I, it's amazing to me that, and this is not really necessarily about his role, but what he said in that clip, that these veteran guys still keep saying, like, I want a chance to win. Mm-hmm. And it's like they still, like, people still believe that they actually have the chance to win. Yes. And it's just like this fan base is what they think about this team versus what others think about it. There just couldn't be more, like, from the outside looking in, maybe it looks like that. And then the fan base is like, what are you talking about? Win? Like, win? Like, that's always, it's amazing to me that, like, he says that in that clip. Maybe he's just trying to get a contract or whatever. Or no, he already had a contract. I don't know. Does that surprise you that these guys still say that? No, because, I mean, Max has made a lot of money, and he's hold, he's holding on for dear life to a career. Mm-hmm. And, you know, do you end up trying to go to Columbus, Anaheim, or, like, the Leafs are a legit contending There's team. There's only eight teams. There's six that or eight chance. teams. And we all assume that the Leafs are in the They're mix. If we were going to pick six or eight teams that have a legitimate shot at winning the Stanley Cup, we'd put the Leafs in it. Yes. That's what he's doing here. Okay. And I get it. The jokes are, come on, it's the Leafs. You can't get out of the first round, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. And yet, you know, we think that the Leafs will be a 100-point-plus team in the standings. Could they win the Atlantic? Yeah, it's a possibility. Will yeah. they? I, who knows? But yeah. he's he's not wrong on saying that at least I'm a part of an organization that have incredibly high expectations. He could have picked six or eight teams that mm. would assure him probably 60 to 80 games. And I'm not even sure that they were out there that they existed because, like to Sam's point or your point, put a young guy in there. Why yeah. do I want a Max Pacioretty on Anaheim right now? It serves right. no purpose. So it's it's really a small window of how many teams could do this for Max Pacioretty. The Leafs mm. know that they need some scoring. And for 873 or whatever, you know, for under 900 grand, it's like he's probably, well, no, he definitely can do more for you than your average guy making around league minimum. So can I, I'm, I will say that I think this is going to work okay. with Pacioretty. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's going to be. I, I'm skeptical. I don't think it's going to be like a, you know, he's going to score 25 goals or something. But I think he's going to be a guy that's a contributor and is not a total zero on the team. I wonder how do you think it looks, works? Like what, what, well, like what does it look like? A, the, what's a positive outcome? The lines this morning at practice, which seemingly could be an opening night lineup potential, the top two lines are very familiar to people with the, the core four and then Domi and Nyes on the other side. But Pat Reddy, Holmberg, Robertson to me, mm-hmm. that's a line that, you know, both those guys on both wings can shoot in the net. They're both, you know, uh, you got the veteran guy in, in Patch Reddy, Holmberg, who's a good skater. Robertson has had a really good preseason. Like, to me, that's a line that could potentially score some goals. I, I just don't think it's going to be a disaster like some yeah. people are trying to paint it out to be. Like yeah. you, maybe. I think it's 50-50 he's here in playoffs. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll hear that. Yeah. Is that am I? I think it's 50-50 he's here by Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Okay. So let's give it a run. Yeah. Let's give it a run, see what it is there. Okay. Um, why don't he was very... just. One more yeah, on yeah, Patrick. Yeah. He was very complimentary about uh, the team this weekend with his yes. comment. Do you have the clip where he talks about this is the hardest? I do have that clip. Yeah, can we? Can it's we hear? Uh, yeah, Patrick clip two there, Derek. Yeah, there's a reason why they have success. This is uh, this is the hardest group I've ever been a part of. I've seen it, saw it from day one. Uh, these top guys, it's not a fluke. Why they're the top guys? They put in the work. They take care of themselves. I saw it within, you know, two minutes of being here, but you see it every day, every morning, and it's really nice to be around. It's an incomplete quote. What see, you, when I heard it, I'm like, what does hardest it's the mean? the hardest group I've been a part of. Yeah, like hardest on the head? Well, I've seen people in writing it 
you know, put the the uh, brackets in and say working, as in they're saying I, he's the hardest working. But I, I don't think that's what he's saying. I don't know. I think he says. I, I think it's the assumption is that he just forgot to say working. Right. That's what people are implying. But like you've been a part of all these different teams and groups at the start of the year. What it's, else? Well, challenging. It's like a, it's been a hard camp or it's like a hard group to be a part no, of because they're pushing each other. I, I do believe that. He means he, working. I do believe he did, did mean it. Yeah, mean right, it. Right. That but what sense. else? Like, there's no other reason. It's a hard group. He's like, God, these guys are hard to be around. <laughs> and, and, but, but he also spoke of watching, like, Matthews or Marner or Nylander go out and, and do hard drills for an hour before even practice started. So I, I do believe that he is leaning towards that. Yeah. You know, I mean. He's supposed to be one of those guys. He's a fitness guy and all that, isn't he? Who's that? And Patrietti. I, I don't know. Himself, I mean, yeah. did we? Like, for me from afar, like not knowing everybody around the league, but I think we can generally say that we know that we could think about guys that have reputations for being really hardworking and mm -hmm. then others that maybe don't. Yep. You know, I don't, I don't know where Max Pacioretty falls into the, you know, being a good judge of, like, how many teams has he been on? How many games has he played? He's come here for three weeks and he sees – in three weeks that they're the hardest working group he's ever been around. I'm questioning the groups he's been around. <laughs> well, he, well, he, he did say that uh, pre-contract. That was the, before the contract I was signed. I can't say that's not a factor here. Uh, like, and to answer you your know, question. You're interviewing for a job in all these interviews. and To, to answer your question, Kippy, he's played 902 career games. 902 games. That's a lot the, of teams. Montreal. Montreal, Vegas, Carolina, and now yeah. the Toronto. And uh, yeah. really just Montreal and then a couple yeah. others here and there. Like, I think it's. I think it's nice if it's if he's trying to kind of like, you know, make the guys feel good or appreciated for their hard work. But Maybe it's a hardworking group, Kip. Maybe it's a hardworking group. I got news for you. Like, they're all hardworking. They're all hardworking. Yeah, work. I would hope. Like, all of these guys go to camp the guy that and got they traded work from Buffalo hard. to Colorado, and he was like, "This is an actual team. This is brutal." <laughs> I mean, it was middle stat, right? When oh, Colorado yeah, yeah, yeah. was like, "This but team works hard." See, they practice really hard. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Maybe you know he's just. You know, you guys are you guys sh are hardworking, and maybe they are. Maybe they maybe they they're ready well, to go to another level. Boys, there's a first time for everything, and it's that you guys couldn't figure out what somebody meant in a clip. Yeah, because you guys can usually do that. I don't pretty like well. that the answer is the easy one. It's probably just hard work. Yeah, you just forgot. To say. Um, it was. It was. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that for a second. So Bobby McMahon's on the outside looking in. This show has been very pro McMahon mm -hmm. last year. I mean, where you think he should have signed a bigger contract? I've been pushing for him. Well, I just think he won. When he was in the AHL last year, yeah. writing about him. Yeah. Let's listen to Craig Berube, who has him outside of the starting lineup night one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, goods and good and bad. I think not bad, but like you know, um, there's more there. I know that. Uh, Bobby knows that. So, um, you know, I felt he maybe was a little hesitant at times. You know, he's a great skater, good size, needs to be a power forward out there, and um, so. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. He's going to force Bobby McMahon to run into people. Well, now, did you have, you, you've watched him other places or you played against him or something? You, you've yeah, got, watched him with the Marlins. Yeah, you, yeah, you thought he was, no, but even prior to that, where he, did you think, at, well, maybe I'm wrong, but did you, didn't you think he was soft early? Uh, I don't know. No? I have not soft, but he's not. A bruiser, like I think doesn't come natural. He's a good four checker, like sticks yes. and whatever, yeah. but he's not like a in your face. Okay, but to Sam's point, it's not. You think it's something that needs to be really manufactured with him, I think or he has it's to just consciously doesn't... do it. And can he? You think he can? Because judging by yeah. Ruby's comments, it's like eh, sometimes, sometimes not. And yeah. I gotta, we gotta know exactly what we were getting out of a yeah. a guy that should be a power guy. I think, yeah, in today's NHL, I think he can, we've seen him be aggressive and win pucks and be in battles. Oh, come and, off the wall and drive to the net and, yeah. like, have four guys hanging on right. him. Like, he's that kind of strong. Right. So he can do that, but I do think, yeah, in terms of the physicality, like, using all the tools is going to be, you know, it's like Pierre Engvall, right? And all the all the tools, can you use them? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a reason he makes, what does he make, a million bucks a year? Like, yeah. Bobby McMahon, like, with a body and skating, and, like, there's a reason right. that he costs nothing. Right? Yeah. There's just there's going to be flaws in his game. The thing that I think people are going to take getting used to with a new coach is having guys that were a lock in the lineup last year on the outside, right? Like, for example, him 
Where man, if you were Lilligren. yeah, if you were writing this like at the start of or the end of last year and be like opening night next season, Bobby McMahon's on the outside looking in. Nobody would have believed you, but no. it's just something you got to get used to with a new coach. Yeah, you go, Craig Berube's coming in, McMahon's out, Robertson's in. I'd be like, <laughs> how does that make sense? Yeah, Lilligren's out. Uh, Timmons. Timmons is in. Like, yeah, it's just a very, it's just going to take some getting used to, I think, fellas. One of the things that is, has and is standing out for me is when I look at this lineup, is Tavares back at second line centerman? <laughs> yeah, okay. there he is. And... Do you know I wrote about this today? The one thing, I'll ask you about it in two seconds. And the other thing is that Holmberg is locked in. Now, you guys have known for a long time how I felt about Holmberg. You're the original Okay. Home. Yeah, you are. And there's a sense right now that Craig Berube is really high on the Holmberg train. Really? Huh. Choo-choo. Oh, I can see it right now. I just look at that lineup. And that Holmberg guy, with patches and that guy locked in at number three right now. <laughs> is one hell of a statement for me. And I've said this all along, that this guy is big, he's strong, and, like, the the lack of development for him over the last two years has been a concern, And but I think it's surfacing now. You know, he had guys in St. Louis like Buchnevich and Braden Shen, you know, like some big forwards that could chip in here and there but were just strong and physical, and I'm sure he sees a light version of those guys in, in Holmberg. You know, he came in, what, at 2, what do we say, 217 or something? Like, he's he's a big guy. So, yeah, when you look at the ins and outs for Craig Berube, Holmberg up for sure, Timmons, Robertson up, McMahon, Lilligren down. You know, those are some some early returns on mm. Craig Berube's likes and dislikes. Yeah. Now, does anyone envision game one that... Matthews Tavares end up one two again of the setting? playoffs. Yeah, no, of the playoffs because I don't playoffs. You're talking about a regular season. Oh, starting game one in the playoffs. Like, is there a chance that Matthews and Tavares play through the regular season, albeit healthy or you know maybe a night off, that they aren't one two to end the season? I, you think that Tavares is likely the three? I think clock drop in the playoffs twice now. That we've heard Nylander at center twice last year and this year in training camps, and yet there he is starting at second. Yeah. So there is somebody in that organization that goes, we need better than Tavares at number two. Yeah. Uh yeah, I agree with that. That they that they do for sure. And, and they've bailed twice on it. And. So my article, it's on sportsnet.ca. It's exactly about this, about Nylander and about his ability to be that. I think when you look at it on paper in the summertime, you go, God, he's great through the neutral zone of the puck and he's big and strong and he's right-handed. He could win draws and he could solve all our problems. And then you look at the way things shake out. One, you give up on all the breakaways. He's fourth in the NHL in breakaways last year. He's behind the D all the time. Pulls guys out. You hate, in the article, there's a video of his like cheating goals. Mm -hmm. So good. Like, oh, yeah. Like, no back checkers. He's just gone. So you give that up. And then how do you get the ice time for these guys the way that it works? If you have them on three different lines, you're trying to get everyone involved, keep these guys at, you know, $11 million minutes. It's a real challenge to, to make that work. If you want Tavares as your third-line center, then Willie has to play against hard matchups and in the D zone at center. And I think that scares coaches. The I think the big, great loss thing that we always talk about here is them not getting Ryan O'Reilly back. It was just, like, the perfect fit, and they, he took the contract that they offered him in Nashville, right? Like, him not coming back after that season, he was the perfect guy that can go up, that can go down. He was, like, that sort of... Penalty. Yeah, like, he was sure. the perfect yeah. guy, and they never really filled that in. But did they get, they'd get a pick at the draft this year, the second-round pick, I remember, from Boston. They made a, a trade to get a second-round pick. So they do have a second round pick. Like to maybe, turn into a maybe that's what they use at the deadline to get a guy that can play three two C and kind of take away Tavares' minutes pick a bit. Well, that's, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It's a work in progress. Like, yeah. As so is think, but they can patch it with someone. this. I think even if you kept Tavares and yeah, there's some issues there with the skating and the, the movement out there and the turnovers on occasion. But as is this team with their eyes closed are a top three team in the Atlantic mm -hmm. 
Yep. Right? So, and 100 points. And we'll be in the playoffs. So, yeah. then what's the rush into finding something that you think? But that will be where their eyes are, you think, for come trade deadline. I, we think, get I, think, I think for, for a year now. It's, it's funny because the D are pretty good now. of, of yeah of what do we, what do we think that can can lean and and push, in the one two hole for mm-hmm. center iceman. Funny because they look a lot stronger at winger now. Obviously Marner and Nylander, Nyes, Domi, but Pacioretty and Robertson being pretty good guys. That means you got McMahon and Yarncroc out. You mm-hmm. know those are guys that those so you're you're pretty good at winger where you have Yarncroc's fallen off. Yeah. He's well, does, he doesn't appear to be like a favorite of Bruby's. Well, the fact yeah, that we have that in common. The fact that he's hurt right now is a little. Is he hurt? I like, don't know. you know, he was. He kind of had this fine lower body issue. The coach called him day to day. He maybe tweaked it in preseason. All of a sudden, he's going to miss ten games on LTIR. Like, I'm glad he's going to have time to get it healed. But this does feel salary cap related. Let's get your injury better. See you in a month for Yarncroc. Kind of punting that down the road a little bit. I I don't know how it works with players and agents with that sort of stuff. And the like team if, says, if, hey, if, if I'm healthy, I'm, I I don't know if, how I would react. I'd be like, I'm good to go. I don't know what they're talking about. They yeah, put me no, on there. Me too, for sure. But I, I don't know. Uh, today's player, today's game, the circumstances. You no longer fit here, but we're trying to move you, or we're, you know, we're, can you help us move you? Does that stuff go on? I, I don't know, but it just seems to me like last year with Sheldon, he was like Mister Reliable. Yeah, put him with the two guys that you think are the weakest or, yep. link on a line, and he will cover you up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was y- with a yarn foot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Put him up, down, whatever. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get that like sense it. right now with him. And, you know, if we were talking about ways that the Leafs could, and we're going to, we'll get into the defense right now, but there's ways that the Leafs can alleviate ca- contracts and, and salary cap. I think Yarn Crop, I, I think uh, David Kemp, and I think of Lilligren. That's a lot Kemp of. Included? Uh, yeah, I think he's he. I think he's safe because again, with with Holmberg and Tavares yeah. and the unknown between second and third line, this guy is a natural centerman. He mm-hmm. can and he t- takes faceoffs. He wins faceoffs. He's big too. He's I, big. He's I gotta tell you, key, key that guy. Fourth line. I, key you know, guy. I, I am a Neanderthal after all, but Buddy, like that's a great fourth line. It's awesome. And yeah. they had that goal on Saturday night. I don't know if you saw. Like, yeah, I did. Lawrence hammers a guy down. The puck goes below the goal line. Reeves hammers another guy. Yep. Like, it's just goes to the net. Still but, hockey. You know, I tell you what, in playoffs, if, you know, depending how it shakes out, if it's Lawrence Camp McMahon as a fourth line, yeah. that is really, really good. Yep. And probably, I mean, Reeves mixed in and out. And it's yeah, the way he'll, he'll probably yeah. start the series yeah. there or something, much like Did last, last year. year yeah. yeah. So. Okay, let's get to the blue line here because... Uh, Do you want to take a break and then come back to the blue line? You're the producer. I'm just yeah. Let's, the, let's who hit am a, I? Let's hit a break and we'll come back, reset, talk about the uh, hit the blue line. Love All right, it. you heard the man. When we return on Real Kipper and Board, we'll get into the Toronto Maple Leaf blue line and where ultimately does the lily pad fit in? Back after these words. The Kipper Hills, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. Uh, big way for me to get off a of PTO here. I got a big read. Oh. Yeah, so you guys ready? Okay, let's see the improvement over right. last week. I was, I, was, I was practicing in the mirror. The NHL is back. You can catch all the action all season long on Sportsnet, Sportsnet Plus, and the Sportsnet Radio Network. To celebrate the start of the new season, Rogers is giving away hundreds of prizes through a national Rogers Beyond the Seat contest, including the grand prize of a chance to win a trip to any NHL game this season. To enter for your chance to win, head to rogers.com slash NHL. Contest closes on October 25th. Boom. You league know how league I knew, minimum. Sign him up. You know how he knew it was good when mm. when you uh, emphasized all season long. Oh, it was hot. I was feeling really hot. good. When you really stretched good. out the all. <laughs> and he hit the all caps any NHL game. I was yes. feeling hot. Yeah, well done. Feeling hot. All right. Back to the regular schedule program. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I don't know if there's any surprise there, but Marshall uh, Rafai and, and Matt Murray both clear waivers, which leaves question marks on Timmins and Philip. Myers, who's in the hunt, and a guy that 
I don't think a lot of people had any expectations on and is now debatably in the lineup Wednesday. This is uh, Timothy Lilligren just holding the door open for anyone to, to have a spot. I'm fascinated by the Connor Timmons thing. Let's let's be real. Connor Timmons does a thing when he's healthy. He's 6'2", he's right-handed, he gets points. He sees the ice and he can make plays. He just doesn't stay healthy. But if I'm Craig Verube coming in and watching him and going, what am I missing? Why don't we like this guy more? Like, mm. good hockey player, just needs to stay healthy. I think there's a sense that if he was exposed, he'd be claimed. I think so, yeah. Timmons? Yeah. 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 I think there's an argument to say that Myers has had a training camp that if exposed, he would get picked up. These are two right-handed D who have shown signs that they can be serviceable players in the National Hockey League. So mm -hmm. it's just part of the depth that you hope that you can hold on to. And if both of them are in a situation where they're part of the roster or they're first man up on a call-up, that's what you need. Yeah. Like you need those bodies in place come April, mm -hmm. especially when a few guys go down. Yeah. No, it is. It's, uh, I'm fascinated that, that he likes uh, Timmons. Can we hear what Berube has to say about Timmons? He's got uh, clip six there, Craig Berube. I, um, I think that he's a real good puck mover, for one. Um, sees the ice and makes plays. Two, uh, he's, been, he's been hard in camp. I think he's been competitive defensively and done a good job. Hard in camp. He said hard in camp, too. Camp sounds hard. Hard. He said hard in camp. You're the hard leaf. <laughs> it, is, it has <laughs> been a very good training camp for them when it comes to, I think, start to finish showing a side of hardness. Really? Yeah, I do. I see Just from watching difference. the games, or do you get another sense? Uh, all of it. Okay. Just, uh, well, all it's a of competitive it. camp because a lot of good players. They, it started from day one when he implemented maybe a day or two of those puck battle mm -hmm. right and like you're fighting for a job and you want to be noticed like i've been in training camps over my career where it's so like hard. you're fighting tooth and nail like you're not a teammate of mine you are an opponent you're you're in my way of getting a spot that's what training camp should really yeah, be when you walk in yet. not a teammate yet until I'm told that we're teammates, you are a guy standing in my way. Now, it's 2024, and it ain't like it was in my day where you would just <laughs> simply two-hand a guy, tree. chop down a tree or drop your gloves or get into the biggest uh, F-U, mm -hmm. you know, argument on the ice and accuse a guy of being dirty, all, all of that. It's not like that today, but the, Craig pulled it back a little bit on these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pulled going it back. to be what do you mean, fascinating. Pulled it back, pulled like it back to, to little, a little years. more oh. older school where okay. it's like no, nothing's given. You got to earn it. You got to go out there. And I think I just get a sense that that was missing in the last few years. You know what makes me trust Craig Berube more is that the people who seem to have won his trust in this camp are not just the biggest guys they have. Like Robertson won a spot. Connor Timmons has won a spot, and he's not a physical guy, but he's said to these guys, yeah. show me. Mm -hmm. Show me you're worth it, and, and these yeah. guys did. And so he said he, I mean, he rewarded them for playing a certain way. To go back to my point, like with the new coach, there's no prior, like, reputations. And he didn't Nothing just come in going, back. like, the big one, the big yeah. one, the big one, not the little guy. Yeah. Uh, he, he set it up that, like, th there's going to be three or four, maybe one, two, I don't know, but... This, this isn't going to work out for everybody. Mm -hmm. For this to really kind of have a sense of continue to pr progress, yeah. there's going to be guys that gotta be just... Losers. There's got to be losers. There's got to be examples. There's got to be losers. Not everybody's going to love them. He's going to pick one or two guys, and I don't know who they are right now. It's, there's a sense that like a guy like Nick Robertson, okay, say what you will, but that guy works his ass off. He does. And he, 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 he works wants. hard. He works hard, and it's been noticed. Yeah. Walk hard, <laughs> hard. <What the? laughs> I've never heard that drop in before, <laughs> ever. That's Derek. That's right. a new one. Yeah, I guess it's because we've said hard a hundred times, and this thing yes. you just talked about Dewey Cox, yeah. I guess. So not everybody's going to fall in. And 
Lilligren is the one. Lilligren, Yarn Croc, I question right now. McMahon, you question a little bit. So we'll see how this thing shapes out. Is there one in Tavares, Nylander, Matthews, or Marner where he's going to have to use one of those guys mm -hmm. as an example, or do they all just You're right. buy in? You're right. That's we don't the even talk big about these guys because they're That's like the big one is that you can come out of training camp and feel like, hey, we're all one and we're all going great, but lose a couple of games and a couple of scenarios where you're not getting the best out of anyone, what happens moving forward? The one thing that's always bothered me is, you know, even when I, you know, you played junior hockey and you scored 60 goals one year. You know, I was a, an all-star in a junior hockey team. But you'd have bad games and you'd end up on the third line or the fourth line. You play 11 minutes one night because your coach sends a message like, hey, doesn't matter if he's one of our best guys. That just never has happened here where you've seen Matthews doesn't have it tonight, so they're just not going to use him. You know, final minutes are not going to put him over the boards because he just didn't have it tonight. I'd like to see that happen a little bit. It's, it's for the greater good, not the... So later, later on this week, we're going to have Mike Keenan come in, studio. Oh, my God. He's got a book out. Are you scared? He's going to get wheeled in like no, Hannibal Lecter. I'm not. The, uh... I'm not. I'm, I think it's going to be, like, fascinating because yeah. I'm asking him questions that may be in the book or may not be in the book. I might just do my Michael Jackson with a thing of popcorn gif. I might just sit here and so, watch you two talk. So here's a guy that I know would go into training camp and already it would be pre-written. I, I, I don't like that guy. That guy's not for me. He Mike can do anything he wants in training camp. I believe I can't win with that guy. I got to get him out of the room. It's crazy. Oh so I, th I, think, I think there are some coaches that just oh, can look at a guy and go, that's not, He's not, guy, a winner. not my guy. And, Mike Singletary can't you know, win with him. Can't do it. Right? And listen, Nick Robertson has been really good, and he's done everything that's asked. The one thing that he couldn't do from last year to this year is be taller. Is look bigger. <laughs> and you're right. You cannot play with him. Be you taller. Cannot win with him. Yeah. Right? Cannot coach with him. So can't I do, do believe that there's some in that organization that sit there and go, "I want a bigger guy on the third line." I'm sorry, but Nick Robertson. Pacioretty and Holmberg as a third line against the Boston Bruins in the first or second round. I need heavier than Nick Robertson. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, not, I don't feel that way, but I understand that people do. Yeah. So we'll see how this thing shapes up, but it's, it, we're, we're going to start the first couple of weeks and there's going to be a few guys going, he doesn't like me. Yeah. That doesn't, doesn't like me. Because there always is mm -hmm. when it comes to a head coach. Yeah, I want winners. <laughs> but isn't there a, like the way that he is that he may seem like he doesn't like anybody? Well, it may seem like it, but he'll show you both how he rewards ice time. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think he's been very complimentary to this group so far, yeah, and they and they've, they've also earned they've them. they've also earned it. I, I think it's been a really good camp, and, and I, I worried about the system yeah. and the adjustments. I think we've got a Craig Berube uh, clip on. Adjusting to a new system. Let's listen to him before we we comment. Well, there's always, I think, adjustments and um, with the new system and um, when the when the real games begin, I, I truly believe that. But even throughout exhibition games, you know, we're always, you know, um, looking at video with the players and, and going over things and little adjustments here and there, and it's, it takes time. I didn't pick the Leafs to win the Atlantic just based on my belief that it might have taken 10, 12 games to make an adjustment. Did you pick Florida? I picked the Boston Bruins. Oh, did you miss playoffs? <laughs> 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 All right. But I, I They're very did, good. Boston didn't, didn't, very didn't good. really matter to me for yeah. a second or third. It's just about a Leaf team that you think is built better in the playoffs than prior years. But I, I thought the adjustment might cost them winning the Atlantic with yeah. Craig Berube. And overall, you can see a slow start. Well, I mean, he wants to turn him to north south and dump and chase. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what we've seen out of the last few years out of Willie and Marner. And it's going to be fascinating to see which of those three guys, not even Tavares, Tavares will do whatever they, he has They to like do. handling the puck. They like their east west. I want to like see their... who's stubborn and who's like, all right, doing it, doing what coach says. And my experience in professional hockey with certain guys is. Habits are hard to break. Oh, yeah. 
I bet you Willie dumps it in. I bet you it's a Matthews Marner thing. Which one of them is going to... For how long? Until what? He goes three or four games without a goal? No, because, you know, you only have to do it long enough for your coach to be like, all right, he's a guy I like. And then you're fine. And then you can do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, you nah. just got to win the approval. Yeah. The mental approval. It'll be interesting. So, we talked a little bit about size up front. We talked about, um, you know, Robertson, McMahon, Holmberg, these guys. The Leafs are big on the back end this year, and Lilligren is on the outs. We've got a comment from Bruby on why do you so, like the size on D? You said that you've never heard him excited? Yeah. He gets excited. In this clip. Giant demon. There you go. The answer might be obvious, so pardon the dumb question, but why do you like size so much on the blue line? <laughs> They're getting away. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, listen, like, it's, it's not all about size, but, you know, it's... Uh, you know, when you got size, it's uh, it's hard to get around you, and it's they just get in the way, you know. And they they cover things around your net, and they got reach with their sticks, and it's important because there's so many quick, dynamic players now with and and size up front too. Like you need that long reach and get in the way, and they bump you, and they you know they're just in the road a lot. So, I, you know, I think it's an important thing. You know, I mean, um, there's obviously. Uh, smaller d that uh play in the league and pretty dynamic though man this organization has come a long way because it was only a few short years ago that kyle dubas instructed his scouts don't care yeah they've come a don't, long way from here ooh, 360 don't, don't back care the about size again. don't bring me size bring me skill 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 five eight five nine on d no problem bring them I feel like that's hockey. The pendulum has swung back where everyone is like, it's going to be the fastest league, so much skill. It's going to be a totally different sport. And then in playoffs, all these big Los Angeles Kings and Bruins and St. Louis Blues ground everyone to wow. paste. And it was like, maybe big's good still. Yeah, maybe we'll like still do Vegas the big when they won. Yeah. Like they're D just monsters. All huge guys. I was like, hey, maybe that's okay. Yeah. What was uh, Colorado's D? It was Josh Manson and mm -hmm. Eric Johnson. Kale McCarr's pretty good. Yeah, he's shifty. He's big too, though. Pretty good. You know, they got Devin Tay's pretty good. Although they did have Girardi. Yeah. yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Uh, no question that as a collective group, this is the best we've seen. Yes. Since Leafs decor? Sorry? The Leafs decor? Yes. Yeah, no question. And it's also, there's so many. You know, Riley, Tanev, OEL, McKay, Benoit, Timmons, Hockenpah, Lilligren, Myers. Myers is fascinating. Like, I'm, I'm surprised he's still here. Uh, Myers has had success in Nashville, and I think he had early success in Philadelphia. I think, yeah. I think close to 200. But he, the tendency with him is to fade. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. I, I got a scouting report on him, which is just – you know, not all guys who are big like to be physical, per se, and he's struggled handling weight and pushing back appropriately given his stature. Mm. So when games get hard, which is later in the year, which is what you're talking about, he hasn't been able to stay in there and be that guy. So why don't we, we got uh, Bruby on him? Oh, yeah. Well, did you see the clip of him this morning practicing fighting with Ryan Reeves? Was he? Yeah, they're on the ice for practicing fighting and you want to stay with the team pal. he was practicing oh, fighting great. and there was a great photo i don't know who took it one of the least beat reporters of uh max domi literally on a knee with like the big no teeth smile just, just looking looking watching, at them yeah. like from me to your way knee just watching them fight it was great so <laughs> that's great that is great i liked let's, it let's listen to uh Bruby clip three on myers i think competitiveness is number one for sure in effort i mean this guy competed hard in camp uh in the games in training camp and practices you know, big guy, takes the body, you know, he's got a good stick and, you know, blocking shots, penalty killing, things like that. So, he, you know, he pressed us. Pressed us. Was that he pressed us he or he us. impressed us? He impressed us. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think, 27, 6 I think and 6. The other good thing to come out of this training camp is a few names that have kind of stepped up and made noise for them to take second and third looks, and I, I think he'd be one of them for sure. You know, it's crazy. He played 16 playoff games for the Flyers in 2020. Yeah. So, like, he's got he's real got experience. He's got something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, quickly, before we go to break, because we got to go to break soon. Well, no, we, we still got five minutes. I, I yeah. want to go ahead. Where do you want to take this? I wanted to know if you guys watched the Amazon thing yet. But you don't want to do that? Yes. I did did, is that where you wanted to go, Kipper? Where do you have I was just going to mention 
Easton Cowan. Oh, there's yeah, a guy yeah. that we have not mentioned. Has he been sent down yet? Yeah, it's official. Okay, today he got just the comment about fighting with this guy. This guy's the CHL Player of the Year. MVP. A guy that many thought would start here. I was one of them. When I heard he ain't going to training camp for the London Knights and he's been here all summer kind of training and hanging out with the big boys and set up shop to to stay um, not in a hotel, that like it was just a foregone conclusion that this guy was going to start here. He had a place here? I don't know if he had a place yeah. here or he had a living good. arrangement right. other right. than hotel. a hotel. But so like, my point in all of this is like, you know, is... Is this a guy that missed a window here, or is it okay here? Well, you know, he he didn't make as much noise as he did last year. Luke Fox has an article out right now. His article, uh, it's Maple Leaf Notes, and his his stuff's always great, obviously. The quote he shared was an Easton Cowan quote where he says, I feel like adding a bit more sandpaper in my game, maybe fighting a bit more. (laughs) He carries on to say whatever. And it's just like, if I... If I'm the Leafs, I'm, like, running to catch him in person. Like, stop! Stop! You got the wrong impression. That's not what we want. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. Like, again, you're, you are got a head coach that has 3,000 penalty minutes or no. 2,000 penalty minutes. Yeah, but he... You can't tell me that that doesn't make him feel like, you know... We didn't have Robert Thomas fighting guys. He knows good from bad. No, I'm not saying that that's what he wants out of him. I'm saying that I could see him saying that based on looking at his coach. Yeah, for sure. That's That's a young kid being like... a young kid saying... Coach likes fighting. Coach fought, likes fighting. Yeah. Meat and potatoes guy. Yeah. Maybe I got to do this. Yeah. No, you need to go back and have the puck for an entire year. He's just going to go have a kipper in the AHL year, just 300 pims. Yeah, you don't want that (laughs) for Easton Cowan. The one thing that is a little concerning is if if one of the big boys goes down lose for lose significant time Matthews Marner Nylander Tavares right if you lose one of those guys like who in the lineup steps in I thought like Cowan if if his game evolved you could see in a in a position to have the skill to to step up like that but you just wonder like, if, if they lose one of their big boys like who how do you how do you fill the void you don't yeah i mean they were second in the nhl in goals last year i think you can live with being sixth in the nhl if you don't have one of your best guys and hopefully nick robertson scores a bit more and nye scores a bit more and you try to fill it that way i do wonder with a guy like cowan why teams seem adverse to trying different ways like he's done everything you can do in junior shouldn't he go play in the swiss league like matthews did or you know go play against men at some different development level go. You, you think the hunters are taking their meal ticket back to the memorial cup and letting them go to the swiss league this isn't about the hunters oh yeah it is it's, it's no, this is about, a person it's always about, this about, is about, it's always about the them. business pal he's money to them Go sure, he is to them. If I'm Cowan, and just a reminder, and, if, hey, Easton, if you're listening, you're not it's, owned. It's CBA driven. It's yeah, that's what it is. I'm sure the Leafs could say we want him in some different, but it seems like he's going to go back to where he had a pile of success. I, and I don't want to say this too loud, but it's probably good to have yeah. a good relationship with the London Knights for sure. The other thing, <laughs> don't underestimate <laughs> the influence of Matthew Kachuk too to Easton Cowan. How so? Look at Matthew Kachuk, a big scorer. Top player, fights every once in a while. Maybe that's his role model. What are you oh, yeah. About? How tall is Easton Cowan? Matthew Kachuk is I don't know. a large person. Well, Matthew Kachuk's probably 200 pounds. What's Easton Cowan? Buck 80? Generously. Okay. 70? Well, hey, beef up, pal. You, maybe he <laughs> 5'11", could be, 185. Hey, he could be a little bit of little more Matthew Kachuk. Okay. What do you think? Hey, we, we all could be. All right, we'll take a quick <laughs> break. We're back. We go national. Andrew Raycroft, coming up next. Let's welcome everybody in to the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. This is the National Hour. We are live on Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary, and seen coast-to-coast on Sportsnet. Sportsnet, this hour of Real Kipper and Bourne, brought to you by Bet365. 
And if you can't catch us live, you can always download our pod on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Where else, Sammy? Everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere you get your pods? Everywhere. You get us. And tell us uh, you like us or hate us and give us five stars. Great. Okay. Oh, the old rating and review. Subscribe. Do everything. I read a review. Uh One on you. Oh. Wow. Can't be great. No, it it was really good. Oh, like, which I. Which then I did a thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs down I, get a, I get a thumb, thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah. I'm I got, gonna find it for you. I got a buddy, my buddy Donnie, who loves this show, and he once in a while he'll send me like a negative YouTube comment. I'm like, Donnie, we, brother, I don't read these for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm actively <laughs> avoiding these. Like, Donnie, relax. Well, it's um, all based on how much you talk Leafs in our national hour. Yeah, I think that's that. what that's the that's the right. one that gives they you hate the. That. <laughs> um, so generally, I like to think I'm a fairly positive guy. Mm. I, I want to start by complaining about the way the NHL season starts. Oh. Can I do that? Is this the right forum? Starts Wednesday or starts no, exactly. in, in, in Prague? Yeah. Did it? It started, right? Yeah. It started, yeah. yeah what a lunchtime yeah. on a Friday yeah. in Prague. Great. Yeah. How many people watch that? Nine? 10 a.m. Saturday morning, not prime time for yeah. a hockey but game? That's not for you. Okay, so that's not for me. It's... Can the start of the season be for me and not St. Louis? Seattle at 4.30 on a Wednesday? Tuesday. 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 What well, are we doing? Well, that's... that's. I'll tell you what we're doing. <laughs> Can we what have is an that? Event? We're like... kissing the ass of ESPN and Amazon. That's well, what we're doing. Can we not? It would be great if what we did was it's opening night. It's Saturday. All 32 teams are playing. It's an all... It's opening day. It's yeah. a big deal. It's a thing to sell. Listen, or through the NFL, it's, the it's like it's NFL had their first night. Do Chiefs, it. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, right they, out the they, gate. Let's go. They yeah. are the kings of the castle for a reason. They do. They make good decisions. But if you were going to try to do sixteen games in one day, it's virtually impossible. Kippy. They do it. It happens throughout the year. The NBA doesn't start with the Charlotte Hornets and the I don't know the the, yeah. the Toronto Raptors. At 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning. No. They start with the Lakers. Like, it launched the season out of a cannon. We're like, oh, it's actually they, started. Yes, there's preseason games. So they on, wanted the triple header Wednesday. Or, to, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Right? Yeah, tomorrow. Triple header, yeah. It's a triple header. Triple header, baby. So uh, the first game's what? St. Louis. 430 yeah, Eastern. Seattle, yeah. Could you name two more middling teams in the league? The yeah. 18th and 19th ranked Blues and Kraken. <laughs> Where's the kipper? Later today, Where's the last mid? was Blackhawks against the team that just came into the Utah Hockey Club. Mm. At least Boston, Florida. Oh, we have right. Boston, Florida. Are you Florida. good? Uh, yeah, you, but you feel on, better? people agree with me on that. You feel better? That was as mad as I think I've ever heard you. It's stupid. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, start off this National Hour welcoming in Andrew Raycroft, retired goalie, does work with the Boston Bruins, co-host of The Morning Brew with our good friend Billy Jaffe. And, of course, yours truly, Razor, pulled over, FaceTiming us. Thanks for doing this, pal. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, I just ran out of my daughter's hockey practice. So awesome. I started at a 5, so I'm just missing warm-up, and well, I'll, I'll get, get back out there. We really appreciate uh, your time because there, there was no bigger story in the National Hockey League this weekend than the thought that maybe Jeremy Swayman and the Boston Bruins would not agree to a contract in time for – opening game doesn't mean he's playing opening game but uh I, I think the bruin fans can have a bit of a sigh of relief here uh, i'm sure you've been busy with this story but you're the guy that we wanted to talk to about this and just overall your surprise in a very short period of time coming off cam neely's comments to lewis gross's comments to where we sit today how, how did you see this play out well, I was surprised it didn't get done over the summer, to be honest. I, I thought they would both be in a place where, where they could get it done. And and if there was a holdout, it would be a few days. You know, Jeremy, with we heard obviously a lot of talk of the arbitration, et cetera, that, you know, maybe he'll, he'll sit out a few days, make everyone answer a few questions, but at the end of the day, get it done. And then with the press conference last Monday, uh that was an interesting morning when when cam piped up and said i was surprised i was that was the one where it's oh here we go and, and of course he he went on and talked about the 64 million reasons the statement that night 
and you, you get out of there Monday and, and uh, of course my phone's buzzing. Everyone's talking about, okay, now what does this mean? And December one really got put to the forefront right away. A couple, couple days later and just being around it, you're like, okay, maybe this actually closed the gap. And now in hindsight, uh, I know Lewis Gross did an interview today and kind of talked about that got the wheels going. That made us talk. That made us get it, communicate a little bit more. And, and then at the end of the day, guys, you know, it, Kipper and Bourne, you guys know it as well as anyone money talks and, and both player and team were going to be hit financially finally tomorrow or today, I guess. So that's really the, the ultimate pressure point. And, and we saw it play out that, that money at the end of the day, talk, the Bruins were going to get hit with cap issues and, and Jeremy Swain was going to have money taken out of his pocket on a daily basis. And, and fortunately that was the pressure point that got things done. So do you think there'll be any repercussions from this in terms of a, the relationship with Swayman and the team or Swayman's ability to be up to speed early on? Um, you know, what, what can come from the way <clears throat> this played out? Sorry. Well, I think I think the team relationship, player relationship, I think that's fine. The fact that it's an eight-year deal, if, if it was a three-year deal, um, you might be thinking differently. We might be expecting something to happen again in three years. But with eight years, this is going to be more than water under the bridge. Once the season gets going, no big deal at all. You move on. Um, Hockey-wise, performance-wise, it will be interesting to see where, where Jeremy's game is at. Um, he was training with the college guys around the corner. Uh, but we all know that that's a little bit different. Now, we he has an ultimate belief in himself. Um, I won't be surprised if he plays tomorrow night. I, I know that was like when, when Montgomery talked about that last week, that was part of the same conference call as, as negotiating time. So uh, there was a little, yeah, he was undecided today. Jim Montgomery was, uh, didn't 100% say it was Corpus Salo. So if we don't see him tomorrow night, Jeremy Swayman, I got to imagine he's doing the home opener and we'll see uh for the for the Bruins sake you hope and his sake you hope that he's he's up to to NHL performance if he is then that's a whole nother discussion of why are we even doing preseason and and that can be an interesting one he might be the guinea pig for kind of the swell that was coming the last couple of days with some of the injuries and and people talking about preseason um so it remains to be seen I didn't see him on the ice I didn't I, I so I can't tell you what he looks like um he practiced today in Florida but but it wasn't my own eyes looking at him we're talking to Andrew Raycroft, former NHL goalie, now studio analyst for the Boston Bruins. So the whole play out of Cam Neely calling out the 64 million reasons, the the sign last exhibition game that said 64 or get lost. So <laughs> Tough sign, once, once things went a little public, of course, egos are involved, right? And we tend to, we, the tendency for us, Outside looking in is trying to evaluate, was there a winner? Was there a loser? Who looked better? Who looked worse? Did, Cam, did Cam's comment absolutely work? Did, did the kid cave? How, how, do, how do you see it? Well, I, I can't, I, you can't say that, you know, after signing a $66 million deal that, that you caved. That, that's pretty good stuff. You know, good point. Games, <laughs> what a loser. Well, 32 in his career. That's, uh, I would cave. All week <laughs> so if fast. I, if I was getting sixty-six million, you know, dollars, let alone million. So I don't, I, I don't, I think at the end of the day, it, it it got pretty much as fair as possible. I think the word, you know, like it wasn't like the way it would have caved. I think we would be saying the word cave if it went into the regular season and either the Bruins went seven and zero or they went zero and seven, and one of two parties had to go hat in hand to the other. Mm -hmm. That would have been a cave situation this one i think is a little bit fair it's a lot of money for a guy who's only played 132 games but with the term and being as young as he is you and the cap going up you would expect this to be a pretty good deal from the bruin side in four or five years so i think it, it, it hit the sweet spot um and and it and it, it comes down to performance now right it, it's Kipper, you guys know it, there's no bad players in the NHL, just bad contracts. And that's now Jeremy Swayman's expectation as an $8 million guy. The first time he gives up a bad goal, of course, Boston media and, and media in the NHL is going to go to the contract. But that's what you have to live with when you're when you're a big boy. Razor, massive turnover for the Bruins this season. It's a Heinen and a Lauko and DeBrusque and all these guys out. But you get Elias Lindholm in. 
and uh, Zadorov. What are your thoughts on the changes made there and where it leaves the Bruins? Well, so I, I, I think they're better than they were on this day last season. Going into last season, they had lost Bergeron. They had lost Krejci. Who's going to play center? Is, is Pavel Zaka number one center? Uh, on the back end, who's filling in? Like For three or four years, it's been who's the big left-handed defenseman that the Bruins have. They're too small on the back end. Matt Grizzlicks of the world, just not big enough. Uh, that narrative has all changed. The back end is huge. Uh, the depth players, the Castellics, the Max Joneses that they brought in as well over the summer made them bigger in the bottom six. So I think they're better than they were last season. There is still a hole. Jake DeBrusque leaves a hole on the second line. He played with Charlie Coyle and Brad Marchand almost all season last year. They didn't fill that role. They didn't have money to fill that role. So right now it's Morgan Geeky on that line. Can he add to his 17 goals last season? I think that's the real question for this team is is not depth scoring, but can they score against the Toronto Maple Leafs last year? And then Elias Lindholm centering the number one line with David Pasternak and then moving Zacco over to the left. So Zadorov, can he pick up? Like he ended up being this cult hero for the Vancouver Canucks, yeah. man. He was like all world. Has he picked up where he's left off? Is there an adjustment? Will we see him slowly work into a top four role? It, well, yes, I think that it, th I think he's in a perfect position for signing a huge deal in the summer. The expectations kind of low. Um, he doesn't need to score 15 goals. He doesn't need like he's the right now through going into tomorrow night. It looks like he's on the third pairing with Andrew Peak. Uh, Bruins went with Lindholm McAvoy, then low Rye Carlo and then Zadorov and Peak. So. If he fits into the Bruin system, uh, understands D, you know, the dots in and be is that physical presence. I think his his bar is set fairly low that he can continue to be the guy that he was in Vancouver just by because he doesn't have to overreach and be something he's not. Do you see anyone in the division? Like, where, where are the Bruins in this division now? Florida coming off a cup. Leafs probably a little bit better. But you've got some teams chasing Detroit and Ottawa and Buffalo all trying to get better. Uh, Kipper picked the Bruins to win the division, I'll have you know. Do you see them as that good? I do see them that good. I, I It's going to be – I like, Florida, I don't think – they don't care if they win the division, right? Mm -hmm. The Florida Panthers don't care. As long as – if they're the eighth seed, they're, they're probably be more happy playing in that position – um, I think Toronto is just going to score a lot of goals and, and similar to last year, they just get into the playoffs because they're so talented. I think the Bruins are in that situation. Now the Bruins did go 10 and 0 to start the season, both the last two years. I don't expect that to happen, <laughs> but I do expect them to be a hundred point team. And, but I don't think similar to Florida, I think. And, and really, probably the Maple Leafs are thinking the same thing. Just get in because the Atlantic's so difficult. It's so it's it is the best division, I think, especially the top four teams. So um, I, I I think that they're going to compete for that top spot because again, I think they're better than they were last year, and they were one point away from winning the division last season. So I think they will compete there. I don't think it's a team that's like going to try and get eighty five points. I think they're more of a hundred point team. Um, and, and then playoffs, it's all about matchups as we found out the last few years. So in terms of the center ice position, uh, with the Boston Bruins, obviously uh... with you in that now, the only, the, the only caveat to that championship idea is when the Bruins and we're going back to 11 and 13, I know that was 10, it was a different game then, but even in 19, you know, Bergeron, it wasn't like he's a 100-point guy. He was never a 100-point guy. He plays a 200-foot game and let his wingers do the work. Uh, Lindholm is cut out of that same mold. Charlie Coyle is cut out of that same mold. So, um, I again, I, that's where I go to the wingers. And, and a guy like Jake DeBra, a 30-goal guy that was pretty consistent or close to it, that's where they're kind of missing out. So, I think with Lindholm and Coyle, they just add so much defensively in their 200-foot game. But they do need some more goal score. They need Pasta to get 55. They need Marshawn to get back up over the 30 mark and, and chip in. So that's I do agree with you in that respect where, you you know, it's not Sasha Barkov, right? It's not Connor McDavid. But I think it's just built a little bit differently. No, I look around the league now. I'd love to get your thoughts on goaltender tandems. It seems like tandems or even trios are kind of the way to go now. 
I, I'm curious uh, how much Swayman will give up to Corpusalo in terms of games played, but also just your thoughts on the way the position has changed in terms of how much guys play. Yeah, I think it's it's just it's so hard to be a goalie in the league. There's so much east west. The players are so good. The power plays are so good. You you just can't play 70 games. You can't play 65 games. I think it's just too much of a load. So I would expect you specifically Swayman and the Bruins with Corpus. I I think it's a 55-30 mix or you know however you want 50-32 or no more 55-27. Um and I think that's really the ideal sweet spot for all teams. Try and get their starting goalie under that 60 mark or right around the 60 if necessary. And then the other guy plays, you know, once a week, basically. Uh, I, I think that really is the best mix. And, you know, the, the, the guys that play a little bit more are the ones that they're fighting for a playoff spot down, down the stretch. And they end up getting 15 of 20 at the end of the year or 15 of 18 at the end of the year. Um, but the good teams, ideally, they're always going to be right around that 57 to 60 at most for a goaltender. It's just so hard to be a goalie now. Just one more thought on that, and I promise I'll let you get back to your daughter's practice, okay? Um, last year, we saw this amazing chemistry betwe between uh, Allmark and, and Swayman. Uh, Allmark's gone. He's in Ottawa now. And we had Steve Aliquette on last week, and he talked about sometimes guys – like a comfort zone on uh, knowing what kind of player they're going to be. And if you stretch them out to uh, uh, from, from 30 games to 40 or 50 uh, it's, it's a, some guys just can't make that adjustment. So I'm asking you for all Mark to step out of the scenario that he had with Boston, a very comforting situation to now being the man in Ottawa. What do you expect out of all Mark in Ottawa? I'm I'm watching intently on that. I, I and just as much that as just being in Canada. It, it's different, right, guys? It's, you know about it's it. Different, and I, I I too well, too well. I know. About <laughs> yeah. It. Um. And Ottawa's not Toronto, but Ottawa's still in Canada. And if it gets off the rails a little, I, I so I am in. I am curious in that because it was. And, and to be honest, a little bit with Swayman, right? Like he had the first year it was Tuca and Allmark, and and now Allmark, like. It's different being the man, and it's definitely different being the man in Canada. So I think there's a lot to be watched when it comes to that. And what Valley was talking about is 100% real. It's it's easy to be in a comfort zone when you know, okay, I lose this game, but the other guy's going to win and everyone's going to forget about my last loss rather than losing to Toronto on Saturday night, then playing in Montreal Tuesday night, losing that game and coming home playing having to play three games in a row after losing two in a row and playing the Buffalo Sabres on Thursday night to get in the playoffs. That's different pressure than going every other and, and everyone forgetting your last start. So uh, it is something to watch for, for sure. And Linus is an unbelievable goaltender talent wise, but it's definitely something he hasn't tackled before. Razor. Great stuff, man. And we're going to let you go get back to practice to the stale coffee. And I don't know, dad's complaining. <laughs> you know, thanks for your time, man. We appreciate it. No, anytime, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, and uh, enjoy the first few weeks of the season. As you, you will too. as well, Andrew Raycroft. Yeah, um, yeah it's going to be uh, an interesting play for sure. Uh, you know, as far as Swayman's situation, like, come on, between Boston and maybe even Lewis Gross, you guys couldn't get there without all this I agree drama. With like, you're going to get to this number-ish anyway. Razor got a legitimate LOL laugh out of me with yeah. what with the i would have cave like uh, yeah. that's cave that's Did great cave, cave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but got a good laugh out of me if you spent <laughs> if you spent all summer asking for 10 mm -hmm. or nine and a half or something significantly more mm -hmm. and you you stuck on it and you know it's not like there weren't legitimate uh arguments to suggest that he should get to nine but there's enough to contradict it it depends if you st uh, staked out those positions knowing they were bargaining positions or if you actually expected to get 10 you know the guy hasn't carried the load for an nhl team and proved he could do it so i think that's enough to say all right you're not gonna be the highest yeah. paid goalie I, in the nhl but i think he's good enough to get the contract he got for sure like and i it, think i think he I would you put I him in the goalie. same boat as Roken? 
Yeah, Sorokin, Shosturkin, Vasilevsky. No, he's, I, he's below. He's whoa. He's below Kelebuck. those guys for me. Like I, like if I had a winner take all, I'm still taking Shosturkin or Vasilevsky out of that list or for sure. Yeah, it's unique. There's not too many, and Sorokin's one of them where they're young enough that they can demand a higher number based on the fact that there's so much upside, but the danger is the upside never comes. I saw today that Shesterkin's likely to get, what, 11? Well, that's plus. interesting. He held out. Swayman held out as long as he needed Shesterkin to sign so badly. Yeah. Set a number, then say, I'm $2 million Set less than Set a number that. and just go, okay, the market's changed. Yeah, if he's 11-5, I'm there's nine. There's new nine, money nine, in five. the system. Yeah. There's new money in the system. The cap, I don't know what it's set at now, 88 million. Yep, it is. It, it's, okay. it's an artificial number. It's not really 88. No, it's not. It's, it's the, more than that. The, the cap should be much higher. They, they kept it lower so the guys could pay off their escrow. The thing's going to just jump in the next two or three years. Mm-hmm. And Good. I think, and I, and no I, time. Yeah. Good. And, and I, think, I think at 825, this is a contract that if Jeremy Swayman does what he's supposed to do, it's going to look really good for the Boston Bruins at 8.25 in four career. or five years. Yeah. Oh, just what they need is some more contract luck. A value deal. Wow. They don't have yeah. any of that. Yeah. Marchand still makes sick. Is that? Yeah, right. He's sick. in the last year's contract the this year. trophy votes for like a decade getting sick. I, they're just going to be really good. The, uh, they're going to be really good, the Bruins. Uh, yeah, they are. It's a good lineup. And you asked him about Lindholm. Yeah. yeah. Lindholm's is going to turn into Grace Bergeron putting on that jersey. He, he's well, going to be elite. Your fear he's just going to be elite defensively. He's going to be unbelievable. Lindholm of Calgary, no as question. A number one line, no question. Lindholm, McAvoy, Lowry, Carlo, Zadorov, Peak on the back. Huge, huge, huge defensive core guys. And up front, they're looking at Zaka, Lindholm, Pasternak, Marchand, Coyle, Geeky. You know they're good. They're really good. I like Frederick down the lineup. Brazo is six six. Love Frederick. A lot, a lot of good players. Love Frederick. Yeah. So yeah, Bruins good. In conclusion, great. Uh, want to stay on goaltending a little bit? Demko, you mentioned earlier, um, not saw, off air, that you think he might be out a month. Is it uh, Donnie and Dollywall? Is that the name of the show? The uh, excuse me for not getting that Diwali? right. Dollywall, maybe. No, let's continue. Definitely another not. another month. <laughs> another month or so into November for Demko, I think was the the report there. Saw that just before we came on air. So, but that's you know. You okay concern. with? Like, you she lo- she right. loves had a good camp, and it it appears that. There's momentum coming off of his spring that he can hold the fort here. Yeah, I think he's fine for sure. But like one of the reasons uh, the Canucks were with a 110 point team last year, Demko's elite. He's a Vesna caliber guy. So they, they claim that Patera today yeah. off of waivers from the Bruins. Claiming a goalie makes you go, okay, mm. they're going to be without a guy for a little bit here. So, yeah. but there is like some issues going on with his knee that has to be a, dr jason smith filled us yeah uh, well i mean we had him on earlier and there's no question that uh he led us to believe that there are other issues going on here that a guy that you think might be out of a game or two in april mm-hmm. isn't ready in october it's a long time they signed patera they also signed nils hoaglander to three times three. Those contracts I find, especially in this cap era where it's either going all to the big boys up mm-hmm. front or you're, class you're, deals. you're signing for 750 Yeah. There's very few now that end up in the $3 million range. Yeah. Hoaglander's one of those you guys. You don't like it? I, you know. Or you think he could drop? I, I typically think, having watched the Toronto Maple Leafs for years, you love these guys until you pay them. You know, you, you'd love to have who have they done that with over the years, whether it's Engvall or Kerfoot or Yardencroc or Camp, or until you give them the $2.5 million, then you're like, ugh. It was fun when we were getting them cheap. So Hoaglander is better than that. I think Hoaglander is still going to contribute. He's a valuable guy. They may get good value on this deal yet. Um, but you're right. It is one of those deals that's kind of that middle number where you're like. And Engvall was on waivers. Pure angle on waivers. What's the guy left on his deal? Just six years? <laughs> 3.15 or something? Five or six years, anyway. What the hell was that? I got to tell you, that might be the That's weirdest Lou. NHL contract but, ever. But 
But he why? would have known that Pierre Engvall was a certain type of player in Toronto. He would have known that. And I don't know why he loves these long-term deals to guys like that. Like, he's not Nick Paul, Engvall. He never was. You know, you take a guy's, a fringe guy's motivation. Kuhlman, there's a few examples from Lou. Yeah. You know, maybe it's like lose a little bit harder to play for. You got to keep your, you know, beard shaved off and your hair cut. And you got to maybe he just wants to make sure no one can run, run away, away once he gets them under a deal or something. I don't know why he likes deals like that, but this is wild. And also, he got a 16 team no trade in that, uh, which obviously doesn't he matter. He did? Now. Yeah, but that's, he did. He has no trade in that deal. <laughs> oh, my which is God. Like, yeah. Who are you outbidding? The other team should get protection. <laughs> yeah, that, like, they won't get, do get they don't, no. <laughs> At that point, if you're thinking about trading him, you might as well give him the, the cause because no one's taking him right. with that number. Yeah. Now, for the record, no one's claiming that contract. So no, he's going to get through. Right. And the Islanders he did. Yeah, he cleared. This is a public shaming. He's still going to play. I bet you he plays sixty games for the Islanders this year. And then for the second and the <laughs> third game, he disappeared. <laughs> That's Butch Goring on Pierre Engvall. Last <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That was two That's years ago. That's just not a wonderful ago. drop in by Derek. No, that, that was actually Butch Goring. Yeah. Butch Goring. <laughs> that was when we were in the old studio. Engvall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing so hard when he said that. Yeah. And oh so my God. Paul Derek. Yeah, really good. You know what? This guy is six foot five. He skates as well as anyone in the league. He shoots as hard as anyone in the league. And he just that's it's like if you had oh, no listen. toolbox to nobody, operate the tools. Nobody in the National Hockey League can get to the wrong spot faster <laughs> than P Pierre Engvall. <laughs> what would you say? I saw someone call him athletic you today. Do, like, yeah. Not athletic. He's just God given. Tools, yeah, and hasn't figured out how to use it. That's how that's how he made the NHL. Oh yeah. That's All right, Sammy. Look at him. What do you got for us? Game time, baby. All right, it's game time. Presented by Bet Three Six Five. Visit the app, play the odds, and find it's out. It's game time. Get uh, it's game time. Presented by Bet Three Six Five. Can't do that to me, Derek. Visit the app, play the odds, and find out why it's never ordinary. At Bet Three Six Five, must be nineteen plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Derek hasn't figured out yet that I am literally a chimpanzee, and if as soon as that <laughs> goes in my ear, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. Got to start over. A uh, couple things. Was looking at the most goalie wins in the NHL this year for the regular season. And the favorites, this is a, in descending order. They start with Jake Ottinger is the favorite for the most wins by a goalie this year. Got no backup? At plus 600. UC Soros is plus 600. So they're both favorites at plus 600. Igor Shosturkin, plus 700. Stu Skinner, plus 700. Mm. Andre Vasilevsky, 10 to 1. And Thatcher Demko, 10 to 1, which I thought was very interesting to have Thatcher Demko. Yeah. He may miss a month of the season. Vasilevsky's backup is... That he, list came out before Hansen. Swayman signed. Right. I, I'm, it was... I looked at it today, so yeah. no, it didn't. Really? But well, you, you think they... you get value on Swayman then. Yeah, like, you think they paid attention yeah, uh, yeah. to that signing? I think they paid the How can you not attention? have... Swayman with the Boston Bruins, not on that list. So that, I mean, that was just no, but that this is you finding value. Do we do? We, do you have the? I'm I'm there? just pull, I'm just pulling it up here. Uh, you can get I, Swayman. So uh, the there's multiple people in front of Swayman as well. Swayman is at fourteen to one. Uh, that's first. I'm sorry, and they put Demko the on that list. Demko is ten, 10 to, to one. one. More likely than Swayman yeah. to get a bunch of wins. Yep. Okay, then why aren't they paying attention to the fact that this guy? Is hurt and then not okay, starting. I gotta tell you, there's not many people you're that pay one. closer attention than bookmakers. But you're on <laughs> one here. You're on. You're yeah. So you found some value. If you want to bet on a Toronto Maple Leafs goalie to win that, it is Joseph Wall at plus three thousand, thirty to one. If he get if he plays more games than the goalie who wins the most, yeah, that would be a good year. Uh, and there's another one I wanted to bring up with you guys here today because I found this one really fun. Okay. Uh, the finals exact forecast. So. You can bet on the exactly what's going to happen in the final. So, for example, okay. Okay. if you want to bet on a reverse of last year's final, mm -hmm. the Edmonton Oilers to beat the Florida Panthers, that is 45 to 1. If you want to bet on them to beat the Devils, it's 45 to 1. Is there, is there a, a particular one that you think? What do you, what's your Stanley Cup final pick, Kevin? Well, is there not years now yeah. where the team that? that wins lost the year before, like Florida lost in the Cup final, then won? Mm -hmm. Would they beat Vegas, who, no. Vegas, no, no, you're, you're working on a theory here. Yeah, I'm working on it. We'll work it out on the air. Okay. The the Leafs to beat the Oilers is plus 8,000. 80, yeah, so there you it's go. It's just not enough, not enough value there. 
That'd okay. be a great bet. Insanely specific pick. Make like a Christmas present and wrap it up. <laughs> oh, tough crowd today. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck. That was game time. Presented by Bet365. This is the app for the latest Get found as Bet. And I know why it's never ordered at Bet365. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. All right, Sammy, nice job. Okay, we'll take a quick break. We'll get into the news and notes of the National Hockey League. When we return, what did you ask me? Who's in the Stanley Cup final? Yeah. All right, maybe we'll discuss after the break. You're listening and watching Real Kipper and Bourne. Coming down the stretch here, this hour, Real Kipper and Bourne, brought to you by Bet365, Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee, Anaheim Ducks claim veteran goaltender James Reimer off waivers today from the mm-hmm. Buffalo Sabres. I started my career being claimed off of waivers mm-hmm. in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. This guy's 36 years old. I started my career with James Reimer in the ECHL. Really? Yeah. How was he back then? I don't know. I was terrible. I wasn't paying attention to anyone else. I was, just, <laughs> I was with the Reading Royals, and mm-hmm. uh, I played one game with them in, in 2008. Yeah. Listen, he's had a hell of a career just in terms of being a serviceable NHL goaltender. You were minus one in that game, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. What, what's, I, uh, I did get traded right what, what, after one game. What is Reimer's career earnings? I got to think maybe 30, 40 million bucks. I, I don't know how Pretty to use well. Puck PD yet. I know. I feel the same no? way. It's like I do best. not know how to so access it. Cap friendly, you would have had the answer to me already? Listen, I don't want to disparage Puck PD because I'm sure a it's job. there. I just don't, don't know where to look to, yet. I don't know how to work it yet. Yeah. I'm the same way. So he signs in the summer for a million dollars with the Buffalo Sabres. Career earnings, 35 mil. Okay, I was close. Yep. Very good. Right? That's that's a great career. It's a nice. He is actually out earned my hockey career. Right. <laughs> and nice media. chunk of change. Figures he'll take another run at being in a situation, comfortable situation, which he I think yeah. he liked in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And then he wakes up this morning and goes to the rink and finds out he's got to pack his bags Ugh. and go coast to coast. Mm to Anaheim. I gotta think he's sitting there going, what am I doing? Well, this is, it gets to this point for everyone at the end of their career where you have a block of years of the team, some years of the team, and then it's in, going back to 2021, uh, it's, or sorry, uh, 2019, it's Florida, Carolina, San Jose, Detroit, Buffalo, Anaheim, and at some point you go, I just don't want to do this anymore. Well, My wife and kids are and I assume he would have cleared waivers, except uh, Gibson is still out with uh, um, uh, appendectomy. 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 Yeah, it was close. Appendectomy. It was. Not bad. I'm you in the what, ballpark. You what you meant. You're getting there. But they got a young kid there, do they not? Well, they got that Dostal. Remember the kid? Oh yeah, which has shown the Leafs. Leafs. Yeah. 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 Showed he has shown sign, signs yeah. of brilliance. Yeah. Like any other young goaltender. Right. Right, with tremendous so upside, small, except yeah. we can't tell what's between the ears. And I'm pretty sure the, the Toronto Sun put out uh, an article or a headline that's like, no name goalie shuts down the league. Yeah, it was like everyone going for disparaging. So yeah. Like, the Ducks like, did a big post about it, and getting all bent out of shape. I remember Easy that. Ducks. Like, waivers, I was in my early 20s when it happened to me, so I was just Didn't happier than a So you got claimed you know from what? Florida by no, Washington. Philly. No, or Philly. Philly, yeah. Philly by Washington. And then you got to play. And then... It's like you're playing. You're not. That's the best. You're you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And it was great because it's just me. Mm-hmm. Pack up and go. But, yeah. this, you know, this guy's got to pack up and go you got and sit in a hotel. The coolest cities in the league, huh? The Philly's great. You got to go to D.C. Yeah. You got to be in New I York. Got, you got to be in uh, Toronto. Hartford, Hartford for you. <laughs> oh, is Hartford, Hartford not the coolest right? city in the league? Well, listen, if. You want to you want to get you want to get insurance. It's a great place, you know. Either sit in an insurance seminar or get car insurance. I think you can get a good deal in Hartford, Connecticut. There was value in Hartford, but clear waivers gotta be a blow to the ego too. No, well, you know, teams do that sometimes to show the player that no one wants you, like guys that are asking for more ice time or complaining. It's like, you know, who wants you? Literally no one. Not one team. Yeah. Not one team. Um, uh, what's going on with uh, the Florida Panthers? Because they had 
scheduled uh, a ceremony for their Stanley Cup rings, but that yeah. got canceled because there's this storm coming that's even worse Hurricane than the one. Milton. Milton's coming through, and it is... It's bad. What is happening? It's actually bad. terrifying. It's, it's really bad. Like, terrifying. Yeah, like Category 5, they've, they're they calling for people to evacuate. It's really scary. Tampa Bay Lightning have left Tampa Bay to get to Carolina for their opening game just so there's no travel issues. Um, and then they've canceled the game. They had a preseason game tonight that's been canceled, right? Yeah, there was. Yeah, which was they're weird gonna, that there was ever a game tonight anyway. Very strange. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. they canceled it as well. So, yeah. Thoughts with uh, people in Florida because that's a uh, it looks scary. Uh, you got into it a little bit with Andrew Raycroft with Swayman going back to Boston and what maybe that Atlantic division can be. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we expect somebody to come out of the Atlantic division in the Stanley Cup final? Because you asked me, I don't know, you want to talk about a, a potential Stanley Cup final or do we save that for? I think we save that for tomorrow. For tomorrow? But if you look at at the teams outside of the Atlantic and the East, who do you think, like, who do you think outside of that would be in the Stanley Cup final, outside of the Atlantic? Like, because I, I look at these teams. Jersey, like these Carolina, teams. Rangers. Rangers are the one to me. Penguins. Rangers are the one to me. That really I stands know, out I thought, me. But the listen. Devils, come on. Like, I'm not, everybody is so horned up about the Devils. Well, I'm not, Doug. I'm not. <laughs> like, I think they're good. Yeah. And they could potentially be very good, but, like, you know, just something I, I so horned up. I, I can't think of a a new coach better scenario than the New Jersey Devils for you Sheldon think, Keefe. You think it's the right team for him? I don't know if it's the right team, but all I'm saying is there's a lot of coaches out there would have loved to walk into yeah. Hughes and Markstrom now, their goaltender and... But they scored a goal last game where Andre Palat went in there and, like, bodied someone off the puck and ends up on uh, Nason's stick. You know, just beautiful. Uh, Did you guys take anything away? I see people, uh, like, what chaos? Shout out to Pete Blackburn and Mm -hmm. DJ Bean. The the heading for their podcast today was, like, the the Sabre season was fun while it lasted or something to that effect. I mean, I watched a lot of both of those games. And the Devils were skating circles around the Sabres. Like, they are a big, fast I think it's more unit. about the Devils than Buffalo. I still you think do? Buffalo's okay. They they don't even have that. Uh, so you're buying the Devils, big time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm starting, not, to, I'm starting to buy in, uh, too. Regular boy. season, for sure. They're not big, right? Like, it's not like Hughes and Bratt are going to overpower anyone in the playoffs. But, but that Bratt can fly. Yeah, yeah. So fast. They don't even have Luke Hughes in the lineup. They don't have Brett Pesci in the lineup. <laughs> like, no, they're loaded. Like, come on. Hamilton's Those coming. Those two guys you know. come back. Uh, yeah. Like, it just it makes does get saves. a little better for them. So, you it's going to be really fun here for the first month when maybe the Leafs getting used to the new system with Barube, maybe a slower start than you. Yeah, a fast Devils well, team. Well, you know, they play the second night of the season here. Leafs on the second half of back-to-back Jersey. traveling there. There's chance for early panic here. What do we think about <laughs> Not here. underwhelming loss to Montreal going there? Zero yeah. and two. So uh, Buffalo goes and gets Lindy Ruff. Yeah. Lindy Ruff's a guy that you hire if you get you. Oh, you're, you're ready. Gotta get in. You're you're, ready. You're, you're almost ready, or you just need a nudge to get into the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, that would be a huge accomplishment for this team with getting in the playoffs. Yeah. I uh, so I had an article out yesterday that was about my expectations for every. Did you NHL just sit team. there all day and write articles. I just, I, I, this guy's how, how many articles you got out there? Uh, Thirty-two. Million. The uh, so, but I do have one out. Expectations for every team. Two sentences. Just what I think is going to happen with every right. team. Ooh. And I was like, I think this Buffalo team could have a good back end. Could surprise people. Actually, a pretty good team. And already had that paragraph sent to me like, ha ha, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I just think give it a sec. Let him play some games. I just think I look at this Boston or Buffalo lineup and they just don't have that much of an identity for for me. No. Right? Not a front. So Tage Thompson, I know we called him Mario Jr. Tage Lemieux for a bit. There's yeah, Tage <laughs> Lemieux. For a long time. For a long time. Whole first second season. Had that. a bit of a setback last year when it comes to, you know, managing high expectations. <laughs> He could still score. Like, he can still come up with maybe 35 or 40 goals. He should score 40 every year. But who, who's 
who's the face of this team? Who's the the leader? Who's the alpha dog? Who's the uh, so Dylan Cousins? No, Alex Tuck. Is it Tuck? No, the face of the team is Darlene. It's power. It's yeah. Darlene and power. Darlene is the face of that team. Yes, Darlene's now the captain. He's their number one defenseman. Okay, he's a Norris but level up guy. Front, but up they, front, they, no, they, they don't. You know, every team has prospects, and for years they've been like, here comes J.J. Paterka, and here comes Jack Quinn. It's like everyone has these guys. You need to I wish, trade for some. I wish Owen Power had a uh, like a, a mean streak in him. Yeah. I, I don't see it. No. You know it's tough when you're big and everyone says stuff like that, and you're like, can I just be good? Is no. it not okay to just like shoot it in a bunch and defend well? No. I don't, I don't think you can maximize if you just want to be good. Yeah. Like, do or do you great. want to be great? Like Hedman. I remember, and I think it was Brian, good. Brian Lawton drafted Hedman. And, you know, he loved he loved him, obviously. And we've had this conversation on this show over, you know, if it came down to Hedman versus Tavares, if you had the first pick. Still go Hedman. And, and Lawton loved him that much. Mm-hmm. But there was that, those first couple of years where, you know, I think Hedman probably looked a lot like Owen Power, where you're like all yeah. this, this uh, great potential and this is had a good comparison and had great upside. But when does you you start seeing a guy like fully committed and physically engaged and mm-hmm. taking control of a game? And because yeah, Hedman's not a mean streak guy either, but he uses his size in a way yeah. to protect the net. He- I mean, yeah. Owen Powers Owen Power is in his fourth season, starting his fourth season. He's yeah, can't 20, be right. He's 21 years old. It, this is his fourth he NHL played, season? He played eight games in 21-22 at the end of the yeah, year. That, does that count? Yeah, I mean, he okay. played in the NHL right. for a season. And then he played, yeah, 22, 23, 23 24. He's 21. Those eight were, no, those eight were when he signed, I think. Yeah, still, I mean, played. At the is, end of the year. This is the fourth NHL season he is playing. We're having, a, we're having a semantics battle. He's okay. 21 years I'm old. I'm fine with it. He's 21. I'm fine with it. I am not concerned about him being really good. I think he's going to be I very, very good. I do believe that these big okay, guys but, take time like Chara yes. did. Uh, Zadorov was not a star immediately. I'm a star now, but... Can you get it out of a guy? Yeah. You can? I just think I, it hits I think a point to a not certain point. Anger, but you're just well, the, the anger is the yeah. key. I got news for you. The ang- the, 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 the controlled, you want the controlled anger or the, the, that, that edge, that... It, yeah. it sets guys up to go to other levels. Right. As long as it's controlled and it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I guess you're talking Stanley Cups, playoffs, that sort of thing. I don't know if Power will get there. He needs to show, he needs to get to the level where he's like a 25 goal a year NHL D at that size. And then we can worry about layers. Let's just get that offensive yeah. piece. Yeah. I know. I mean, you're right, 21, lots of upside. Yeah. Still the body needs to develop. The mind needs to develop, right? Yeah. Awesome name. Power. So. Um, all right. Let's, what uh, else is of uh, well, interest? Hall on waivers. Justin Hall on waivers. So the Detroit Red Wings, let's keep it in the Atlantic here for a hot sec. Uh, Hall has, I believe he makes 3.4 uh, this year and next. So no one's claiming that deal. Detroit here, our team's catching them the Iser plan is that what we were calling it terrible name like now ottawa people people like ottawa more and i've seen a few people like buffalo more what's up with detroit they got good players they got great young players but who, who? uh lucas raymond okay insider insider okay and they have by right. all accounts one of the best farm systems i think too. larkins okay. yeah. i think larkins a good player i don't know if on a championship team is mm-hmm. he the number one guy I think he's pretty good, but that's next level stuff. Yeah. Uh, I question a few things that Stevie Eiserman's done over the last few years. I look at Andrew Kopp and Comfort, and I'm like, they're the same. And they were also. Do you, do you need two of them? Paid well. Ben Sherratt was paid a lot. Justin Hall was paid a lot. You know, they, these are. Right. The other one, the one, the other one I have issues with Detroit is, do I want Tarasenko? And Pat Kane, both in my top six. Mm-hmm. Can I have both of them? They're the same now. Yeah, and I love the idea that like and, you could have one of these guys at the end of their career shoot it in the net for you. But two? Yeah. Do you need two of them? That's listed. That is their second line. Yeah. That's with Comfort in the middle. Tarasenko, Comfort, Kane as your second line is not in the Atlantic. 
That ain't like, right. I like you're talking like it's the AL East now. Tarasenko. Well, you know, it's like it that is. doesn't play in that doesn't play in a- <laughs> Tarasenko works best with a strong room. I.e. St. Louis, I.O. Florida. Tarasenko in Ottawa was a disaster. Really? Yes. In that he just just didn't work. Didn't move the needle. Yeah. Right? Didn't help. Didn't, you know, wants his ice time and didn't seem to have a great influence on the team. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about Detroit's room right now if they're ready for a Tarasenko. Yeah. I think... uh, Derek Lalonde, great guy by all accounts, and a lot of people, great coach. Great hockey night in Canada analyst breaking down yes. how to beat Tampa Bay. But I think the yeah, last bet 365 odds I saw, <laughs> I, I think he was the uh, favorite for the hot seat, like the hottest seat mm. around the NHL. So we'll keep an eye on things there in Detroit. Okay, and um, as we get ready for Wednesday, more and more talk about the Montreal Canadiens, mm-hmm. and that's the other team that uh, – are they ready to – Make noise and make play significant games in uh, in March, April. I don't want to be dismissive, but no, Jack guy's trying to make noise. Jack Fought guy's again. the thriller. Um, you know, they're I love Slavkovsky. Fully believe that he's going to be the real deal. Hmm. Um, I like Caulfield more than most people. I just this D is too young to be competitive. Way too young. Um, Vancouver traded for Eric Brandstrom, uh, Brandstrom trading out Tucker Pullman. Cat move. Apparently. Retaining five hundred thousand yeah. dollars of Pullman's yeah. deal. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he not? Why? Well, was he not considered a key piece in trading? Uh, uh, yes. Was Eric Carlson or Mark Stone? Mark Stone Mark to Stone. Vancouver to Vegas. Yes. He was when he came back to Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. And then so it, it just he hasn't found his footing. Uh, so Pullman goes to Colorado. Which, uh, Pullman's a pretty serviceable guy. You get him for two million bucks. Be be a good fit for a Colorado team there, and just for Vancouver, save some money and see if Brandstrom can figure it out. There you go. You like Colorado in the uh, East? I don't know to make any noise because at all? it totally depends if they have they can go to a- or Landeskog. We wouldn't be shocked if they somehow found themselves in a conference or Stanley Cup final. Nachushkin or Landeskog. If they have both guys, they can win the Stanley Cup. If they have neither guy, they're not going to win a round. You know, they're, they're, I, I still think Landis Cog is a tremendous long shot to resume his career. Yeah. And I hope I'm I hope I'm wrong. But he's been out for how long now? Two years? It's gonna be by the time he gets back in the but mix. That's a long time to ask a guy to come back and Imagine he's how good everything again. else feels. His joints must oh, feel yeah, great he, he, for that. Pliability up up top <laughs> yeah. is great. All right. All right. We want to talk about tomorrow. I mean, we still got so another what was opening night in the NHL. Night. You didn't hear? Oh, I'm breaking down Utah Blackhawks. So, so will we have <laughs> Utah will, will, will the game be over by the time we go to air? No, it'll be on literally while we're making our first hour. It'll be on. Oh, they better have a hell of a first period. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some juice, boys. <laughs> still, some meat on the bone before we get everything going on this side of the country. Wednesday. Good night. Big night. Our thanks to Andrew Raycroft. Have a great night, everybody.